Now, in other news, the Trade Union Congress is hitting back. It vows to rally behind any worker sacked under what the TUC's General Secretary, Paul Nowak, is calling the Undemocratic and Toxic Strikes Act. Now, this comes as Nowak urges Labour leader Sakir Starmer to create a wealth tax, saying a national conversation on tax has become Urgent. How much weight does he carry? Joining me now is Jasmine Bertels, economist and founder of MoneyMagpie.com. Thank you very much indeed for joining me, Jasmine. Lots to get through here. The Trade Union Congress, of course, they often call for things like wealth taxes and, of course, they're going to stand behind public sector workers when it comes to uh, labour market regulation that may prevent them from striking as easily as they can. But do you think that the TUC will have the ear of a potential Labour government, that we could actually see, further down the road, a wealth tax implemented? It's possible. I mean, they're, they're talking about it in Scotland. Um, I personally, I think that a wealth tax is an extremely bad idea, purely for practical reasons. It's never worked in the past. In fact, it does the opposite. It, it harms an economy when you bring in a wealth tax, essentially because all the, the rich people leave and the rich people are often the people who create the work in the first place. So, um, Yes, in answer to your question, I think it's quite possible that they will have the ear of um, a, a future, uh, well, potentially um, Labour government. Um, it would make sense. I mean, frankly, it would be silly if it were, if they didn't listen. Yeah. But um, I would hope that they would argue against it simply looking at, at what has happened in the past. I mean, a wealth tax sounds great on paper if you don't look into the real consequences of them, which we can see. France implemented them, other European countries have implemented wealth taxes and they've often rode back on them because they haven't actually earned that much money to the Treasury because, as you say, people change their behaviour. Rich people can change their behaviour quite easily, not least by moving abroad, but also moving around their money and assets in ways so that the taxman can't uh, seize them, essentially. Yeah. So it sounds good on paper, though, because we do have public services in need of investment. We do have constant uh, demands on the public purse, don't we, Jasmine? What do you yeah. make to the current conversation going on in the Conservative government about tax? We well, have Tory backbenchers left, right and centre saying what tax they'd like to cut. Yes, absolutely. I, I do find it extraordinary that the so-called Conservative government has taxed us until the pips squeak, really. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a shocking thing that the, 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 the party that should be against tax and pro-growth, pro-business, seems to have just been wanting to tax us on everything. And, you know, we're talking about rich people, but also you're talking also about middle, middle earners, because I've been hearing from people who you know, earn a, a decent amount. They're, they're working in, in London, maybe they're, they're on, you know, a, a six-figure salary. But they're seeing so much money coming out of their, their pay packet already because, particularly because of um, Rishi Sunak and then J Jeremy Hunt freezing the um, income tax threshold. That I, I've heard of people saying, well, I'm just not going to bother working. They're, they're going to take early retirement. They're going to do something else. And, and this is what a Tory government has brought in, a Tory government that should have been cutting taxes, not increasing them. Um, and I, I really don't feel that particularly income tax, but also VAT, are sensible taxes to have at the moment, the, the sort of the height that they're at. It, it isn't sensible for the economy. It isn't good for, for workers. Yes, and we have these all of these quirks in our tax system. Well, firstly, our tax code is absolutely enormously long. Lots of loopholes, yes. lots of complexities, which can be just as difficult as the amount that we're forced to pay, yes. of course, just the length and the complexity of it. What do you say to yes. this uh, d debate over strike legislation, over this labour market regulation? minimum service levels. Of course, the TUC, the head of the TUC, isn't happy with this. He wants to support any worker who wants to strike. Do you see this battle ongoing? Yes, it, it is a difficult one. I personally believe that people have the right to strike. I'm very much behind the Amazon workers, for example, who yeah. for a long time have not been allowed to strike, something that this is, there's been a continuous fight for it for a few years 
between um, Jeff Bezos's um, Amazon and the people who work there um, not being allowed to, to set up a union, etc. This, I think, is against their, their fundamental human rights. And I think it is the right of workers to withdraw their, their labor you know, under duress. However, it is very difficult when it's doctors and nurses, when it's it's you know firefighters, essential workers. It, it's it's a difficult thing. Um, so I I do agree with with the trades union that that we need to support everybody's right to strike, but there needs to be some sort of balance with the essential workers. I would say, and I personally every time now to be honest that I see the TUC or any union um, apart from the English Workers Union say anything about their workers. Frankly, um, I, I don't believe it because during lockdowns, the TUC and, and nearly all of the unions were not supporting their workers. They were particularly not supporting care workers and nurses who did not want to take the vaccine and, and were thrown out of their, their mm. jobs because of it. Now they've been brought back, but they should have been supported by their unions. The unions were completely silent during this time. So anything they say now, I go, oh, yeah, well, maybe. but. You know, you didn't stand up when it was really necessary. Yes, it could be that there's uh, more interest in politics than actual, yeah. you know, the the rights of of the workers. Honestly, yes, that that is the way it sounds to me. That you know, suddenly they've got something to get their, their teeth into, and it's all oh, good. You know, here we can have a fight with the government. We can fight with the government on this, but they didn't want to when it really mattered. With with small people who have don't have very much of a voice, um, if you like, you know the, the small number of people who were on very low pay uh, as carers and also you know as nurses and also doctors, um, and the number of people who were thrown out of their jobs. They've been brought back again now, um, and maybe some of them have compensation, but they should have been supported at the time. So I don't honestly. Um, believe much now that comes out of the TUC. I kind of see them as equal, really, to government. And as you say, saying things and doing things for political reasons, not because they genuinely care. Very interesting indeed. What a, what a crazy time in our history. Hey, thank you very yes, much, Jasmine Bertels, economist and founder of Money Magpie.